immigrants who arrived in New Zealand not long before, um, before Europeans arrived. And the first thing they did was to kill all the flightless birds, basically. And then we have the Pleistocene overkill uh, of the megafauna in North America. So there are lots of examples of indigenous peoples, traditional peoples, actually being, being quite destructive. Um, so, um, so there can't and shouldn't be total deference to what's viewed as the uh, standards of a local community. Also, in many parts of the world, it's not so easy to even identify what a local community is. Um, sometimes in the United States, when I'm arguing about views like this, I mean, it, so in the United States, we'll have people in New England who want local management. And we all think that's good because people in New England have good values. But then there are these terrible people in places like Montana that want to manage according to local values. And what that means is they want to kill all the buffalo, basically. And it's not just in North America. So when you talk about elephant conservation in Africa, there are some local communities that are being impacted by elephants that, for the most part, the people have never seen an elephant before. And that's because there is so much environmental change and human change going on in Africa that you're getting so much migration that what's now a local community living in proximity with elephants may only have arrived 50 or 60 or 70 or 100 years ago. And the elephants may not have actually even been there themselves either, but they're, but they're being seen there now in greater numbers because of, of, of habitat destruction in other places. So the whole thing about involving local communities is one of those sort of great humanistic slogans, but as you, know, you were suggesting, it's a very, very complex issue, um, both, both morally and empirically. Now, I think I lost the question. <laughs> no, that, that was the question. Right?